This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another exciting grounded tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at some beginner tips and tricks. Let's get to it. So the first tip is to always carry the resources for a lean-to. It's three clover leaf and two sprigs. It's super cheap to throw one of these down. And the reason you want to do that is because if you're going to a location where it might be somewhat dangerous, if you're going to fight a spider that you're not sure you can beat or a beetle that you're not sure you can beat, you can throw one of these lean twos down and just quickly set your spawn point there. So if you die, you don't have to run 20 miles to get back to your backpack. You just spawn close by. Don't put it right up on top of whatever you plan on fighting. Kind of put it a little bit off to the distance, but yeah, there's super handy. I just spam them all over the map because there's always a chance that you're going to die to something stupid with one of the bugs, the bigger bugs. So they're just super handy to have so you don't have to spend so much time running back to your stuff. Also, if you do this and you use this strategy, always make sure to reset it back to your base when you go back home. So you're not going out to do something else and accidentally die doing something stupid and not have a lean to down and like spawn way on the other side of the map. Just get in the habit of every time you get back home, just reset your spawn point real quick and there you go. The next tip is to build up high like I've done here. Now, you don't necessarily have to build in this specific spot. There are a ton of spots like this in which you can build. The reason you want to do this is because if you build down on the ground, the bugs will come and destroy your base every so many nights, every other night, every night, you know, randomly they show up and will just eat through your walls. But if you build someplace like that, they can't get to it and they'll just pile up down below and then disperse eventually after the day starts to pass a little bit. You can build in all kinds of different places up high where bugs can't get. This rock is a really good example to start a build. So you can see here, there's no place that I can just run up it. I have to jump. Bugs don't do that. So if I go here to the scaffolding and I start to place that down, I can then build from here and then build out. But I haven't unlocked the floors yet from Burgle, you say, Fire Spark. That's fine. There's a lot of different places that you can just build your beginning base, just a few things you need. As you see, like I've done here, on top of mushrooms, you can throw down a lean-to, a few things of storage. You don't need walls. If you're up high, you don't need walls. So you can just build any place up high. Don't build on, on grass. I don't even know if you can build on grass. I've never tried, but mushrooms are safe. The top of leaves, uh, over over on the tree over there in uh, Spiderville, you can build on top of the roots over there. Most things can't climb up the roots or don't even bother. If you look there in the distance, you can see a tiny bit of green over there where I've constructed a few walls and then there's a lean-to over there. On the lamps, like you see over there, the lamp, you can build, build around the edge of that. Just something to throw up a lean-to and a little bit of storage until you unlock the floors like this is all you really need. I don't even have walls on my base. The other thing is you don't have to worry about support. There's no support issues as you see here. I could just build a pathway out as long as I want to. There's nothing to stop you. It doesn't get weaker or anything like that. So building on top of something like if you were to just come over here to, for example, this rock and then you throw down a single scaffolding like that and then just build up and build out like that you could do that and just have this be the base of your full structure the next tip is if you're getting ready to sleep and only if you're getting ready to sleep don't bother to eat and drink if you're really low. If you think, oh, I'm about to die, my my food and water is getting super low, but it's nighttime and you're just a f not even a minute from going to sleep, don't bother. The game doesn't actually take a percentage of your food and water. It sets it to a static number every morning, every time that you sleep. So if you're getting ready to sleep and you need to eat or drink, don't bother sleep, then eat or drink. Otherwise, you end up wasting the food and water because no matter how much you eat or drink, it's always going to set to the same amount after you sleep. The next tip is if you have full food, you will regen HP. So if I take a jump off the side of the base here and I eat my gnat, let's see where that puts us. That fills us up. Now I should start regenerating HP. There you go. You can see it regenerating. 
So as long as you have full food, you will, it's slow, as you see there, it's super slow, but you do regen with full food. The next tip is how to get the tier two tools. I see a lot of people asking about this. It's really easy to do. You just need to kill a ladybug and search, research its head. That'll get you the insect ax. And for the hammer, you just need to kill a stink bug and get the feelers, and that'll get you the hammer. Um, I don't remember if the boiling gland does or not, but I know for sure the stink bug feelers will get you the hammer. So ladybug, stink bug, kill them, research their parts, and you will unlock the tier two tools. So for those of you who do not know yet, if you're super new to the game, when you cut down a dandelion, you can collect the tufts and you can use those as a glider as you see here. If I unequip, can I unequip it? Well, apparently I can't unequip it, but uh, yeah, it'll say glider here and you equip the tuft and then you can use it to glide when you're falling. You just hit shift. So there you go. So the tip is when it starts to get low, just trash it. So you can just go to highlight it, go to W, or if you're playing on console, whatever that button is for you. If you're on PC, you can just right click and then just click trash one, trash it. And then there you go. You can see it says glider. And then we're just going to re-equip a new one because you don't want to be falling from a really long distance and it almost be running out or, you know, be on the verge of running out and run out halfway through falling. So always keep a fresh one uh, if it starts to get really low. Like I would say anything below like right here, like as soon as it starts to change or changes color and it gets red and it's like right here, I would, I throw them out. So you don't have to, you can take that chance if you want. I don't take that chance. They're too easy to get. They Dandelions respawn all the time. You can cut them down. You can see there it's full of tufts. I just cut it down and go grab a bunch more. This next tip I covered in my smoothies video. If you don't know about smoothies, you should go check out that video. I'll link it up in the top right hand corner. So if you don't know, once you get the smoothie station, you can put anything in here to create smoothies. Use stuff that you have an abundance of to make just the basic smoothies because they heal you quickly and for a decent amount. So if I unequip my armor here and we go take a little bit of fall damage. And then I have them on my hot bar on number seven. So if I hit it there, you can see I get pretty much an instant heal. So they're like instant heal health pots. Super handy when you're fighting stuff and you take any amount of damage and you're scared you're going to die. Bandages are great, but bandages are a heal over time. These are an instant heal that you can just chug and heal, you know, through a lot of different things. So they're super handy to have. Definitely make sure that you, you know, you can use anything like you can use grass. I can just drag plant fiber down here and then just craft up. You can see there we just got another one. Just drag plant fiber. This stuff's in super abundance. So bam there you go another super easy one you can make is the green machine and that is a clover leaf the plant fiber and that makes the and the sprig makes the green machine you can see it not only heals you it gives you hyper stamina for a little bit of time uh, and a little bit of liquid as well that one's a really good one to have and really easy to farm up and just keep those on your hot bar if i'm going to fight something like a wolf spider or something like that i'll chug one of these before i go in to, to fight it and then i always have just the basic ones on my hot bar. So this next tip is about perfect blocking. Perfect blocking is blocking right when they attack. So you can just hold block, but if you do that, you take a little bit of damage as you saw there. However, if we wait, so right before he attacks and then click the block like that, I'm really bad at it by the way, but if you do it, you don't take any damage. There you go. And you can see we actually he continued to heal. Big ant. Big ant. And we didn't take any damage. There you go. So you can grab one of these guys and practice because they don't do an insane amount of damage. And a lot of the insects have tails. So like he would rear back a little bit. Many of them will like lunge back a little bit before they jump forward. And that's how you know to quickly block. It also doesn't make your block bar go up when you perfect block and you don't, like I said, you don't take any damage. So perfect blocking can make this game super, super simple, even in hard mode because you don't take any damage and you're never going to get knocked down. If you don't know, if this bar fills up while you're blocking, you will get knocked down for a second before you and take damage from the bugs. You won't be able to do anything. You'll just like take a knee for a minute. So 
Practice perfect blocking. It's super handy and uh, it could save you. Perfect blocking will also block all of the damage even from the wolf spiders. It will also block their poison. So if you block, you won't, if you hold down block and they hit you, you will get poisoned, but in, you will only take a little bit of damage and then you'll take the damage over time from the poison. However, if you perfect block, you won't take any damage at all. You can also perfect block their jump ability as well. Uh, it's very difficult to do, but it's doable. So you definitely want to practice perfect blocking. If you get really good at it, it could be the difference between life and death in a lot of different situations in this game. Okay, so hopefully you found these tips and tricks helpful. If you did, let me know down in the comments section. If you have any tips and tricks, post them down in the comments section as well. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, you found it helpful, consider hitting the subscribe button and the like button. It helps the channel out a lot. All right, that is going to wrap it up for this episode. If you like what you saw, consider hitting that sub button. I want to give a big thank you to my patrons for making this episode possible. Y'all are absolutely amazing amazing people. If you would like to join my Elite Crew Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.